So numbness in the legs and where? Um, how long have had the numbness? Uh huh. So like the right leg numbness is started in uh, 2016 October. So first I had the pain in my back. Like it's uh, it was like for uh, one hour, and after that I took a medicine, mm -hmm. LED. and uh, uh, within fifteen minutes my whole leg went numb, and I was not having pain after that. Mm -hmm. It was in October two thousand sixteen, mm -hmm. so I didn't care much that time because I was not having any pain. Just the numbness was there. I thought it, it should go away, and it's fine. but in August two thousand seventeen. I started seeing a chiropractor. So mm -hmm. he, um, during my first session, uh, he did uh, he gave me that electric therapy. Mm -hmm. like, uh, they they give you electric therapy on mm -hmm. one uh, leg, and uh, he has put a ice pack on my spine. Mm -hmm. And after that, he they he did the manipulations like he pressed my back very badly. Mm -hmm. When I uh, went home, so my left lower leg was numb. I got numbness uh, in my vagina, inner thighs, and behind uh, hips, and yeah. And after that, I w I started having pain in my neck also, like this area, like it it was like tension pain, like I was having pain here, and then uh, this area was also started getting numb, mm -hmm. and I was having pain also in this arm. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And then uh, I started uh, going to physiotherapy mm -hmm. uh, in uh, October 2017. Mm -hmm. Even after going there for like three or four sessions, I started, I was having more numbness after that. So mm -hmm. I didn't uh, like felt like symptoms do. It increased my symptoms. Mm -hmm. So, but the thing, um, the after the physiotherapy, my pain was much better. Like I was having a pain in the lumbar area, so mm -hmm. it was better after mm -hmm. that. So now also whenever I am active, like for 2-3 hours, I get pain here. Mm -hmm. Otherwise no severe pain. It's not like I cannot like control or it's like okay. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. And tingling used to happen. Yeah, That's and then happen. after the physiotherapy, the tingling also started. My whole body was tingling. Mm -hmm. like, there was very severe tingling. Then uh, I went to a neurologist and he prescribed me gabapentin. And I took that for two weeks and I was having severe, uh, severe side effects, dizziness, and, uh, fatigue, everything. Uh -huh. Then I weaned off. Now I'm not taking any medicine. Good. Yeah. So Good. now, today also he gave me another medicine, which I'm not going to take it. No, for sure. <laughs> So yeah, that is it. So, but my tingling went away after okay. taking gabapentin. Yeah. So, uh, why are you taking vitamin D? Because my levels were very low uh, in August. I went for a checkup. Mm -hmm. Actually, I should tell you also. In July, uh, I was out for like three, four hours, and it was really hot that day. So I was having a lot of sweating that day, and when I went to sleep in the middle of the night. I woke up and I got a panic attack. Oh. That was the first one, first time I got the panic attack. Mm -hmm. And after that, I was very, very anxious. Like I was having anxiety and feeling very low all the mm -hmm. time. But now my anxiety is better. It's not like very severe, like mm -hmm. earlier I was having, but it's better. So I started doing yoga, meditation, and it's much better now. Mm -hmm. And in between also, I went for the dental work. And after two weeks, my numbness, um, you know, the <laughs> <laughs> you can go the the yeah, I know. <laughs> so this is the last hope here. <laughs> okay. Uh, so do you you said you don't have pain? No, I don't have pain. It's not like that severe that I cannot tolerate. So but, I, but I get pain after two, three hours of active work. Okay. Yeah. How about right at this moment? Do you have any no. discomfort? Discomfort. If you push around, can you feel pain? You can do it with the finger. With the finger, okay. Yeah. No. Okay. Can you bend over? No problem. Bend over. Okay. <laughs> Try. Yeah. 
Take both shoes off. Okay. Get yourself re uh, re uh, ready just like if you need. Are you a vegan or vegetarian? No, no, I'm not vegan. So you eat meat? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How's your skin? Skin is sensitive. Not bad, right? You got it, huh? Yeah. So maybe we uh, you will talk then we are gonna talk about your health conditions and uh, we can uh, talk about those things you need to know to protect yourself from bad things. So when you walked in, uh, did you have a numbness? If you feel any difference numbness or tingling whatever okay. uh, you can start me talking and tell me please These needles are not supposed to be anything. Okay, you can put them on. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Insertion, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So far, so good? Okay. Now let's talk about your health condition. Okay. Um, since our DNA resembles our body, 
since we live in the universe, our body resembles the universe. And somehow they discovered that the universe consists of yin yang and five elements. Yin yang is a kind of a relative relationship of a dark, bright, cold, hard, and that kind of stuff. And wife and husband, right? And five elements is uh, from water, you get wood. From wood, you get fire. From fire, you get earth. From earth, you get metal. From metal, you get water. So, uh, since the cons uh, universe consists of yin yang and five elements, our body consists of yin yang and five elements, which are the 10 different organs. For example, kidney is inside of water, and bladder is the inside of water, but then like wife and husband. So it makes 10 different organs, and there are two uh, additional organs which are uh, imaginary organs. So um, each organ has its own five element acupuncture points. Okay. For example, uh, your go. bladder, you don't have to read Korean. Bladder has a two symmetrical, I mean, each organ has a two symmetrical sets of acupuncture points. As you can see, these dots and these dots and the lines connecting acupuncture points and acupuncture points are so called meridians. Okay, so numbness or pain or discomfort, tension that's all simply indication of this prayer. Mm -hmm. okay. So when you bend over because of tension mm -hmm. on your leg. You couldn't bend, yeah. bend a few more, okay? And his wife is kidney. So when you look at kidney, it starts from bottom of your foot, right here. And goes up like this. And like this. And of course, on his right side and left side, symmetrically. And it happens to be connected to the spine. Okay. So <clears throat> your major problems are due to to me unhealthy kidney and bladder. Actually, I have kidney stone also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything starts with kidney Yeah. So even though you didn't tell me all the problems. But you knew it first. No, I didn't know, okay. but I just uh, know that you have an unhealthy kidney and bladder, okay. okay? And just like, and the other area is like your jaw, mm -hmm. okay? That's your stomach is in charge. You see here? Like TMZ, that kind of stuff, they are all simply indication of unhealthy stomach. So the dental work damaged your stomach. So whatever uh, they did to you were trying to do physically manipulate local area. And unfortunately, all the symptoms and problems you have had are just an indication of inflamed organs. And because they did physical manipulation, the result of that activities would raise the temperature of the local area. So for the short period of time, it can give you relief but in the long run, actually it is supposed to damage your organs even more severely. That's how it's happening. 
Sometimes it can help people, sometimes it can worsen people or even more severely damaging people. Okay? So your your numbness on here, here, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the stomach. So let me go through a little, little bit, uh, one by one, because you have so much, so much, much area in Chopra. This is uh, lung, lung and large intestine. This is lung and this is a uh, large intestine. They are like wife and husband, okay? And here, if you feel numbness here, in this line, that's indication of unhealthy lungs too. And large intestine here, here, like this. Okay. So uh, this lady's shoulder problem is right there, right, right here. That's indicates color of large intestine is not healthy and also lungs and large intestine are responsible for the skin okay so the unusual sensation on your skin means they are not healthy uh, we have gone through our stomach and um, this this is a uh, spleen which is a stomach's wife, like this. Okay. And then heart. Okay, heart. is a small intestine like this going through bony bone like this shoulder bone okay and then it goes back we go next one is the bladder and I, I'm gonna skip it but I want to show you the kidney again because I forgot to mention that uh, kidneys and bladder they are functions I, I mean the, most of the things I've, I've been telling you are fo were focusing on the location of each organ's responsibility. And for the lungs and large intestine, I think I told you that, that they are responsible for skin. Okay? And also they are emotionally they are, uh, responsible for grief. So let's say uh, there is somebody lost uh, his parents, then he will be in grief. Mm -hmm. Then that emotion is supposed to damage his lungs and large intestine. Mm -hmm. okay. So he can have colitis or asthma or bronchitis, so many different, even eczema, so many different conditions. Um, by the way, uh, the reason why I uh, want to show this again is uh, kidney, bladder, they are in charge of bones, metals, spiritual energy, willpower, and uh, fear. So panic attack you had was because, because you, your kidney and bladder were not healthy. Now you understand what is how it is tied up and what is it, what, what, okay? And also it is uh, affecting hearing and ears too. So you might have had a tinnitus too, like high pitch noise, all of a sudden, and it goes away. I went for hearing test also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it came normal, but mm -hmm. I feel a lot of pressure in my bones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, also it 
is in charge of reproductive organ too. So when you look back the history, whenever you see different practitioners, you are getting more damage. And then when you put this theory in, um, in consideration, then you will understand what is what was damaging what. Okay. And next one would be this is an imaginary organ, so called the pericardium. Like this. So, usually, carpal tunnel syndrome is simply in the middle. That is this one. Okay. And its husband is triple energizer, like this. It starts from a uh, ring finger, goes up like this. Because you have mentioned that you have uh, the tunnel syndrome. You want to do one more needle. Okay, and next one would be gallbladder. Here. From starting from here, it goes up all around your head. Goes down like this. They can also this can affect your low back as well. And gallbladders wife is liver liver is a very very important organ you see my uh, eyes uh, not working today and it shows a high slight uh, elevation in the liver and glands i don't know what does that mean mm, you don't have to worry about it too much okay, okay. how about cholesterol or blood pressure Th those are normal okay. okay that does not mean that they are healthy my liver is healthy. Anyway, uh, that starts from in between big toe, goes up like this. So it affects reproductive organ, absolutely. So livers and gallbladders uh, functions are muscle, sinus, vision, eyeball, anger. Uh, so so since you started to have the problem like two years ago, mm -hmm. uh, your kind of a tolerance and stress must have been worsened as time goes by yeah. and you get easily upset and mad, right? Yeah, yeah that's natural because yeah. that's <laughs> due to liver damage, yeah. okay? So um, anger and deproductive work it goes back to liver too. Okay, and liver is the kind of a master organ of doing all uh, self healing. Okay, so liver is very very important. Okay, uh, so this is kind of analysis of your conditions. Once analysis is uh, perfect, then we can come up with the treatment. Very easy, right? Um, okay, now we need to talk about what have been hurting you. Here we go. So when you go to my website, click on blog. The top one is the fixed one everything about food and health so we're gonna spend almost one hour yeah. on this subject okay. yeah, there are huge huge information in here so hippocrates said let thy food be thy medicine right mm -hmm. so but actually uh, what he didn't say is your food can be poison too not just because of its bad quality, but even the same quality, if you take too much, it is supposed to be bad for you. 
So no matter how good or it is, if you take it too much, then it will, be, it will become toxic poison. So that part he didn't tell. He didn't say. So now, inflammation, aches, pains, tumors, cancer, and even emotional and or psychological issues can be traced to inflamed or too hot organs. Okay? So even though your problem is numbness, um, still it's it is indicating hot or too hot organs. Uh, let me show you one more uh, testimonials. Because uh, we are talking about here. She had uh, injured by car accident, and she went through all kinds of tests: headache, neck pain, back pain, lower and knee. Left leg has a sensation of a pins and needles traveling up from the feet, and almost a total loss of sensation and skin level, which is understood that she has MS, which is a multiple sclerosis. Stiffness at left uh -huh, ankle and knee. Okay, so. We don't want to spend a long period of time to do a talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you just the last one. She started to get my treatment from April 21st, 16. Mm -hmm. And um, this is her leg sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And when was it? Uh, uh, June 15th, 16th. So how long? Mm -hmm. Like two months, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So this is anterior, mm -hmm. before and after. Let's see this only. Uh, like this. Every time she gets my treatment, after that treatment, she feels better. Okay, like this, right? Like this. So actually, this was the uh, last session she had. That was it. She's getting symptom free now. Well, she doesn't come back, come back see me, so she must be. She must be right. right? Yeah. <laughs> yep, and so she took seventeen sessions. 17. And but uh, she, well, luckily her progress was very quick. So you don't have to worry about anything. Um. So what should be the frequency of the? Actually, first two weeks, I usually recommend my, my patients to see me pretty much every day because every yeah, uh, because the more frequently you see me, the quicker you're gonna get better. In other words, the moment you walk out of this office because you don't have any needles anymore, the effect of the treatment will be get degraded as time goes by. Like, for example, uh, if you're lucky, the effect of this treatment can last maybe a month. But usually it doesn't happen that way. And so it may even disappear in two hours. Who knows? Depending on where you go. Well, the thing is, what I'm treating is your response for organs. So how fast or how late your organs gonna be responding to my treatment? Nobody knows. Okay. So when you come back like a week later, we may have to start all over from day one. Okay. Well, you don't want to do it, right? Yeah. You're just wasting your time and money yeah. for nothing. Yeah. So um, yeah, first or second or. Two weeks, uh, I always recommend to see me every day. But if you would have gone to other type of acupuncturist, then they would have told you maybe once or twice a week because they want to maintain the patient, not to treat the patient. Mm -hmm. okay. 
Uh, again, my goal is to lose you ASAP, right? Okay. Um, the reason why you have a so much or many different conditions uh, is there must be a reason, right? So since nobody knows actually what is bad for people, okay, and they cannot tell you, they're just looking at the symptoms, current problems only. So they can never go down deep enough to dig out the root problems or root causes. So they will never tell you about food and they will never tell you about what you need to do. But, I mean, they can tell you some, something, but actually they, most of them are not true. But from this moment on, I'll, what I'm going to be telling you may overwhelm you and you can get freaked out. But I want you to be freaked out. Okay? okay. Because unfortunately, truth usually hurts. Mm -hmm. Okay? So simply, all dairy products, including meat, cheese, butter, milk, etc., from cow, sheep, grain, and goat, need to stop until you die. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. I told you. <laughs> Prepare to be scared and then freaked out. Okay? Ginseng, dates, jujube, Chinese date, or processed foods and honey. Anything sweet, you need to stop. Because it is good to raise the temperature of your organs or inflammation. Okay, the moment you swallow the candy, the chocolate, it will raise the temperature of your organs or inflammation. Okay? Do you have a Netflix account? Yes. Please watch this movie, okay? Yes. Good ink. So you need to understand how farm industry, how bad they are. And also watch this movie, What the Health. Okay? But even though I recommend you to watch these movies with your family members, you need to watch them with your family members because they need to be shocked too. Okay? So, uh, None of them are going to be telling you the whole truth. Only part of the truth they're going to tell you. Not like this. So even though they say this is what I'm trying to tell you is correct and accurate and true, which is usually not true. And even though it is true, they can tell you all five persons of the whole 100 persons. True. Okay. But it, it is still going to, uh, uh, they are going to be helping you. G How much do you know about GMO? Yes. I think that's the heat of the Okay. Because we are to make this machine. No problem. Drop it in the sofa. No problem. How much do you know about GMO? Like wheat, we used to get uh, like the uh, best form of bees that we used to get earlier. It had the 14 chromosomes and now the wheat that we get is like 48 chromosomes in one bead germ. So it's genetically modified, right? That we are getting mm -hmm. right now. So um, the purest form was that which had uh, like 14 chromosomes in one big germ. So I mean, you know that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, there can be, there can be, not geo, all GMOs are bad. Okay. okay. Like uh, seedless uh, watermelon. That's 
I actually GMO. GMO, yes, because we had seed day earlier in my right. So they, however, the way they made seedless watermelon is natural way. They didn't use DNA modification or that kind of stuff. So that kind of GMO is still safe. Uh, so depending on how GMO is created and why it was created, it can be a very toxic poison or it can be still safe to eat. Okay. And so from now on, the GMO products we're going to be talking about will be artificially in molecule base or DNA base modified. Okay. So in 1920s, there was a chemical company inventing the chemical so called chelator. Let's find out. C H E L A T E. Chelation. Uh, chelation is type of a bonding of ions and molecules to metal ions. It involves the formation of the presence of the two or more separate covalent bonds between whatever, blah, blah, blah. So simply what it is, is uh, the, in steam pipe, there is always scale. So you want to remove the scale because uh, if you don't, then you will block the pipeline. So they invented the chelator to remove the minerals inside of the pipeline. And the Monsanto, uh, which is a global company uh, merged by or purchased by uh, Bayer, which is German company. And they um, purchased that patent from that chemical company and they started to make uh, herbicide. So this is how herbicide works. So when they spray herbicide to the plant, it will be absorbed to the plant and inside of the plant, it will suck up all the minerals from that plant so that the plant will have to get killed. So that's how invented. So that alone, when you think about how it is working, that GMO, once we eat them, guess what happens? The key layer will be inside of our organ, our body. Then guess what? It will suck up all minerals and it can be deposited in some part of our body or it can be discharged. So, like, but if there is a vitamin D deficiency or vitamin C deficiency, you are supposed to get sick. The mineral deficiency, same thing. Not knowing this kind of thing, and you go out to the restaurant and you eat GMO food, then you keep losing minerals. How can you expect you yourself can still be healthy? Right? So this kind of thing, nobody tells you. Okay? So what, I, what happened was, um, Monsanto's, um, let me check here. The main ingredient, ingredient of a chelator was so-called, it is so-called the glyphosate. Okay. And Monsanto's product brand name is Roundup. You see here? Here? I'm, I'm not sure if you've ever seen it, but it is to kill weeds in your grass. So, right here, right here. Okay. So, when you have a. Do you have any dog? He has, but now he Okay. Dogs, uh, they love to walk on the lawn. So their foot 
screen will observe what? Roundup. So that's the reason why they get sick. And the owners of those dogs, they feed them the GMO food. So they are supposed to be sick, no matter what. Okay? And somehow, they found, well, there was a leak in the glyphosate tank. And that glyphosate is so toxic that it can kill all living organisms, including bacteria and virus and fungi. But somehow they found the bacteria still grows in the glyphosate leak. But they came up with a brilliant idea. Okay, we're gonna extract the DNA out of, out of this guy and then put it in the crop. And they will never die with the no matter how much glyphosate they pour. That's the invention of a GMO. Okay. So first the purpose of that invention is um, to be to not I mean, not to be harmed by insects. Okay. So when you go to their website here, insect resistance to GMO corn and cotton bt grabs with insect protection. So they did a beautiful job of massaging the language so that when you read it, you can somehow still healthy and safe consume it. But when you look deep inside, what it tells us is when insects eat GMO crops, they get killed because it's toxic poison. Okay? So, let me show you this guy. A man by the name of Dr. Patrick Moore appeared on a French interview. Uh, this was an interview for a documentary that a French station is doing about Monsanto. And he was supposed to talk specifically about something known as golden rice. Well, golden rice is something that is genetically modified and fortified with vitamin A. But during the interview, he brought up something really interesting. There are certain chemicals that are used in Roundup, of course, the pesticide spray that you... You know, she just made a mistake. It is not pesticide, but what? Orbicide. So just because they are mass media does not mean they're going to tell you the truth, okay? Shame on her. Utilized on all these genetically modified crops. And while he was talking about this chemical, he made it seem as though it's absolutely okay to consume it as a human being. You won't suffer any health consequences as a result. Now, what the French interviewer did in this video was absolutely wonderful. So take a look. Do not believe that glyphosate in Argentina is causing increases in cancer. You can drink a whole quart of it and it won't hurt you. Yes, all right. You want to drink some? We have some here. I'd be happy to, actually. <laughs> not not really, but not really. I know it wouldn't hurt me. If, if, if you say so, okay, I have some glyphosate. No, no, I'm not stupid. Ah, okay, so you... you, you no, but I know... So it's dangerous, I know, right? I know people try to commit suicide with it and fail that's, fairly that's regularly. Right. Tell the truth. It's, it's not dangerous, dangerous to humans. No, it's no. not. So are you ready to drink one glass of no, glass? I'm not an idiot. Interview me about golden rice. That's okay. what I'm talking okay. about. Okay, okay then it's except, finished. Except then the interview is finished. <laughs> this is the way this whole thing. Yeah. Here, complete jerk. <laughs> he, Dr. Moore used to be VP of a Canadian Greenpeace. So money changes people. Okay. Now, we need to know what products are GMOs, okay? Uh, must be somewhere. Here. Corn, soybean, sugar beet, canola, cotton, potato, tomato, salmon from Atlantic Ocean, vegetable oil, aspartame, soy milk, tofu. Actually, uh, tofu is kind of soy milk, that kind of uh, second product, but 
So these guys you need to avoid. No matter what. Salmon also. Yeah, uh, most of the salmon you can find in uh, grocery store, even Costco. When you re uh, look at the label, they yeah, clearly farm. say Atlantic. Yeah, farm, uh, farm raised yeah. or Atlantic. Atlantic it means it's farm raised, no matter what. They love to deceive you to make make it looks like safe yeah like uh, uh, the food anything imported from China I don't even touch it so they well when you look at the label in grocery store they sometimes they use uh, Republic of China right but they understand understand that that label or printing would uh, lose their pay, uh, customers they change the name of the country to uh, the acronym of uh, China so so it, which is uh, uh, Republic of China something like that yeah and it doesn't have to be actually even though, like, um, watermelon, they haven't ever created GMO watermelon yet. But they love to use label putting organic, so they, check, they can check up the price twice, three times. You cannot trust anybody these days. Uh, so you need to, whenever you purchase something, you need to look into the ingredients, okay? Um, and here, processed or bottled juices, sweet foods, I still want you to avoid anything sweet, even from fruits and sh anything, okay? And sugary drinks, soda, diet soda, which may cause diabetes by triggering insulin with the then, uh, which then remains unused and in your system and make you hungry. So, uh, when you go to a restaurant, even though you pay $2,000 per person per meal, they will still use GMO, no matter what. They, the more you get to dine out, the worse you get to get. Okay? Okay. Now let's talk about uh, K4. K4 is acronym of concentrated animal at the top feeding operations. Okay. So look, look at this. They live in a manure, right? How dirty they can be. Look at this, turkey, chicken. Do you see any grass over here? Pigs. Uh, the reason why they, they need to live in this kind of a harsh environment is if they can walk around, or move around, or run around, guess what? They lose weight. The weight is money to them. So they don't allow them to walk around. In other words, all the meat or animals for me, they are they all in obesity. Do you think they can be healthy? None. Okay. Um, so the problem is their feed is usually GMO. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't tell you about the other thing. So uh, when they, the, the first purpose of the invention of GMO, it was to kill insects. Second purpose was to eliminate all the labor to deal with the weeds. And 
of course, they will have to spray lots of lots of uh, herbicide, which is uh, Roundup. And those crops are so-called the Roundup ready crops. And they still don't want to see any insects. So they will still have to spray insecticides. And they don't want to see any rabbits or mice or rats or hogs can harm, harm their farms. So they will have to spray pesticides. How beautiful is that? Exactly. Okay. So uh, when they feed these animals, 90% of uh, their feed is corn. So of course, GMO corn. Okay. And there is a pro other problem. The other people that don't tell you is when you go to slow down, um, slow down here. Corn, I don't see the omega 3 is very important uh, uh, fatty acid. Uh, ideal omega 6 to 3 ratio is 1 to 1 to 5 to 1. Okay. Omega six, ha six has to be one from uh, from one to five. Omega three has to be one. Okay. If omega six is uh, more than five, then you will end up having health problems. Okay. So their corn, their food, corn is with higher content of omega six. So those animal keeps eating corn until they get slaughtered. What happens is their body will accumulate omega-6 way more than omega-3. So that omega-6 will 6 to 3 ratio on those animals will be like 200 to 1. So that alone, they are supposed to be sick because of the unbalanced, very, very unbalanced on the 63 ratio. And lack of minerals, I told you, right? And GMO alone is toxic, poison, and they have Roundup in it, herbicide, and insecticide in it, pesticide in it. How can you expect yourself and be healthy when you die now. Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay, so far, so far, so good. Uh, I'm gonna go over very briefly. Brain, brain is under control of our organs. So fear is simply indication of the kidney and bladder. And also, uh, I'm gonna be telling you a little bit uh, about the motion or posture a little bit later, but uh, yeah, fear and I mean, emotion and organs health conditions are kind of a not one way communication. They're talking each other. So when your kidney and bladder get healthier, then you will have much better tolerances on fear or stress. The anger management, same thing. Okay. And anger is simply function of a liver and gallbladder, as described in here. Okay. So, are you underweight or overweight? I, I don't think you are overweight, but <laughs> no more. No more. Okay. Yeah. Still, if you don't feel good, this is what you need to do: eat and drink less amount with less frequency. Any liquids, including water. No matter how skinny you are, it doesn't matter. The first stage you want to reach is to eliminate all discomfort and pain, right? So you don't care about your weight. You can uh, gain weight anytime you want. You, you just have to eat more, right? <laughs> yeah. So gaining weight is very, very easy. So since you had a dog, when he was or she was sick, guess what? Firstly, they don't move around, 
Secondly, they don't eat. Thirdly, they just keep sleeping. That's their job to do. And because they know that is the best way or best medicine they can have for free. So that's what you need to do. So I always might ask my patients to be a cultural healer. Don't go see chiropractors, don't go see any uh, massage therapist, don't go see anything. Just be a cultural healer and sleep as lazy as possible. Sleep as many hours as possible. Okay. And drinking water. In 1945, there was research, okay? How much water do, uh, do we need to drink a day? So their finding was 64 to 80 ounces of water. But at the end of this report, they say, most of this quantity is contained in prepared foods. That part, they never tell you, okay? So, even roasted turkey has 62% of water, and boiled chicken 71, grapes and all other plants and fruits, at least 82 to 96%. So why do you have to drink water that much? At the beginning of this kind of a lecture or presentation, I clearly told you that no matter how good food it is, if you take too much, it's going to be poison. So you can drink water, but only when you feel thirsty. And to wet your throat, there is no difference in between sipping and gulping. The best way to do it is sip and hold it in your mouth for like five seconds, then swallow. If you feel still thirsty, you can do it again, but you will get to drink less amount of water, only enough to wet your throat. Okay? Again, sleep is one of the best medicines you can get for free. Okay? Go to bed with the empty stomach. So once you eat something, then you can take four to six hours, oh my God, three, two to five hours, you can stay in your stomach. So once you eat that uh, certain food, then make sure your stomach is empty. That's very, very important. Okay? So since I told you that liver is in charge of muscle, when you eat, have some food in your digestive system, then you will have to keep working to support muscle usage on your stomach, small intestine, large intestine, that kind of stuff. Right? So, if you're, you don't have uh, any food in your stomach, at least you can take rest and you can focus on self healing, right? So uh, you told me that you sleep only six hours. No, you need to correct that. And if you have uh, difficulties in sleeping, falling asleep or waking up, please watch this guy. Uh, he will teach you how to Indian yoga breathe for seven eight. So he's quite famous one. Okay, walking at least 30 minutes once a day is very, very important, okay? Once you, uh, you don't have to walk fast, okay? As slow as snail, you will still good as long as you keep walking. Okay, and everybody needs to do that. Okay? And the longer the better. Avoid standing, which harms kidney and bladder. So that's your case, right? Yeah. So when you go to a grocery store and you're waiting in the line, then you need to walk in place instead of keep standing. Okay, every single thing you do affect your risk control organs. Okay. Pains, discomforts, and all other health concerns. Simply, inflammation, irritation, itching, uh, tremor, tumor, regions, and etc. are usually the indication of heart organs. So 
simply doing yoga, stretching, physical therapy, massage therapy, hot pack, etc. Right? Just to be a couch potato. Not even reading? Oh, reading is okay. Yoga and No. For now. No. Okay? But don't do deep breathing because you will, when you do deep breathing or even speaking alone, will raise your heart rate. So many people say deep breathing is good. No, not necessarily. Actually, I always ask uh, my patients to do cosa breathing. Uh, it's gonna be here. Shallow breathing. Very, very shallow. Slow, but shallow. Okay, now, chew your food properly. This is another important information, okay? You have a problem in your stomach. Um, digestive system too. So to give your stomach a lot of uh, break, you need to eat small amount. So spreading out like five times or six times a day, that's gonna hurt your stomach very bad because it doesn't have a time to break. We're supposed to have only two or three meals a day. So more snacks, okay? And also when you chew, uh, when you have a food in your mouth, you need to keep chewing and chewing and chewing until there's no texture left, okay? And pork is still good because uh, pork is with the uh, water characteristics, uh, so it works as anti-inflammatory drug and or antibiotics, okay? And many people must have told you that fat is bad. That's a lie. Actually, there can be two, uh, two different kinds of fat. There can be good fat and bad fat, bad fat. So actually, you need to get good fat. Okay, that's very, very important. Barley, when you cook rice, add the barley because it will uh, work as uh, cooling effect on your organs, okay? And coconut oil, this is very, very important information, okay? Here it is. Come on, come on, come on. Don't be shy. You need to understand. Oh, here. Health benefits of coconut oil. This is cool. It's gonna take like one and a half hour to finish the his speech on YouTube. Uh, he did it on a TV station, and he will tell you amazing stuff for all of your family to uh, need to eat coconut oil as much as possible right and this gentleman will tell you about uh, the effect of the coconut oil like alzheimer cancer aids diabetic and all other stuff. So uh, you need to watch this. Who, his name is Bruce Fife. Okay, please do so. And also, uh, my recent uh, finding was this one. Some people don't like the uh, scent or taste of uh, coconut oil. So this is the, to give you an explanation. What are they? How they are different? Defined one is neutral scent or flavor. The virgin coconut oil is coconut scent and flavor, of course. And the problem is some people, as I said earlier, don't like that, this kind of scent. And 
The smoking temperature is uh, 350. This is low, and this is uh, 400. So you can use this to fry or cook, no problem. And this version is made of uh, from uh, fresh coconuts, but this one is made from dried coconuts, but still same thing. Okay. And this is unrefined, and, and this is steam refined, no chemicals used because it is steam used. Okay. And again, all coconuts are non GMO. You see here? here? They're trying to deceive you. They know. Yeah, that's what they do. And both are 63% MCT, medium chain uh, triglyceride, and 50% lauric acid. That's pretty much the same. Okay. So you can put in a, a, a you don't want to use popcorn because corn has omega, higher omega 6. Uh, you don't want to do a smoothie either. Salty, yeah, cream or soup, yeah, you can use baking or you can use it for coffee, tea, salad. And when you cook rice, you can add it or after cooking, you can add it. Okay, so, so many ways you can use. So I want you to start like uh, two tablespoons a day. Okay, and if you don't have any problem with the digestion and the bowel movement, you can go to three, a few days later, four, five, six, seven, eight. So all maximum you can have is like 11 tablespoons a day. Three per table, uh, per meal, three times a day, and two before you go to bed. Okay. So for example, your son is taking exam tomorrow. Okay. In the morning when he goes to the school, even you want to make him smarter. Mm -hmm. right. okay. Okay. <laughs> if he has some uh, physical. But my kids eat it just raw like this. They're so sensitive, yeah. right? How can you get them? That's what my concern is. Well, you can. Uh, they they can eat with the cookie. Oh, okay. Okay, but the cookie has to be organic, right? Right. Non GMO. Right. Okay. No sugar in it. Uh, 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 what I didn't tell you is there is a coconut sugar too. Yeah, I use that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. And before any, if they, does he play any soccer or? They play basketball and the younger one is doing cricket. Oh, good. Uh, when, before, like right before or like Four minutes before they start the game, play the game, mm -hmm. maybe one or two tablespoons mm -hmm. will give them give them a lot of energy. And even in the middle of the break, mm -hmm. you can feed them again. Oh, okay. And after the game, you can feed them again. again. Yeah, mm -hmm. because it would boost their energy. energy. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. Is like you said, no sugar, right? So can I have coconut sugar because I eat coconut sugar at home? Is it okay to take? Still. Well, the thing is, uh, anything sweet, it is good to raise the temperature of your body. Mm -hmm. So, for now, no sugar. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, you need to love coconut oil. It's the one that you get in Costco is a good one. That, remember the big? Yeah, yeah. Jar? That's the one mm -hmm. we get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be good. Okay. Because I do my most of my cooking with coconut oil. Coconut oil, so I haven't started that yet. Yeah. And that one doesn't have any small smell either. So mm -hmm. nobody really knows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So much of difference. I'm not going to go over cannabis, chia seeds, flax seeds here. Um, I'm not a big fan of turmeric, but even though many people say turmeric is good, especially Indian people. Uh, I think it's part of our diet, so yeah. that stays forever. I'm sorry? Every meal that we cook, we use turmeric. No, oh, really? Yeah. Well, still, you have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's just we are used to it. Yeah. It's a default kind of Yeah. Yeah. So, 
just because many people say this is good does not necessarily mean. See, there's so many good. other things that we don't eat good. So much of sugar, really. Yeah, right. especially yeah. sugar is the culprit. Even I'm, I'm, I'm bad to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And most, okay. Simply, this is a human nature that you don't want to see me as frequently as possible. You want to see me as rarely as possible, right? Yes. Okay. To do that, I give you a tip. Yeah. Even though I keep losing my money. Okay. <laughs> I'm just a tip. <laughs> Writing journal is very, very important. Thank you. Okay. So, like this, when you have a breakfast, how much you eat? What are the ingredients? Okay. When you have a urination, what is the strength? Uh, strength of uh, urine. How much water? What color it was? Bowel movement. How big was it? How big diameter it was? Was it? What color it was? Okay. Sleeping. How many hours? What is the quality of the uh, sleeping? That kind of thing. Did you dream or not? Was it vivid dream or it was dream, but I don't remember. Something like that. So how much water do you drink? And what time you did it? What time, what time? But because when you eat something, it goes through your stomach, right? So you don't know how many hours it's gonna be staying in your stomach. And because you have a symptom related to your stomach directly, that can attribute the condition of your numbness. So you need to write down your feeling, the sensation, even that kind of stuff. So the, the time, if uh, numbness gets worse five hours later after eating, that means your small intestine has a problem. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't write it down, there's no way I can help you. Mm -hmm. Which one is harming you, which one is good. Okay? Even yourself you need to do that because uh, you're supposed to be perfect. But you still have to come see me. That's not good. Mm -hmm. Good for me, but bad for you, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the best thing is you have a same menu and same amount in breakfast, on lunch, on dinner. Okay. Then, like five days or one week later, you have a baseline setup. Now you can add something or you can eliminate something to see what effects you are getting. Mm -hmm. Only one at a time. Okay. And salt, it is supposed to be good for you. So, uh, because it is supposed to work as anti-inflammatory drug and antibiotics. So it will help you all the symptoms, even you, you too, okay? Not too salty though, anything, no matter how good it is, if it's too much, it's bad, okay? Stool color has to be golden all the time. Baking soda is another good uh, medicine for you. So what you can do is like one teaspoon, the flat, and mix it in a half glass of water or one cup of water and drink it when your stomach is empty. Mm -hmm. Anytime. Mm -hmm. okay. And if you, well, I don't think you have an accident reflux, but if you have, when you have a symptom, you can drink it right away. And it will help your kidney bladder and actually when you drink you may uh, before you drink you may want to touch your skin to see your numbness okay. in percentage just like the other lady did okay mm -hmm. and after drinking like 30 minutes later you check her again and an hour later check it out again one and a half hour again to check it out again to see if it is happening or not, okay? And what I didn't tell, oh well, never mind. Uh, so, 
please take your time and click one of these one by one, right? Go through this, and this will tell you about the history, the dark history of the conventional medicine, right? And since you don't have any problem with this, I will, I'm gonna skip it. Oliver is cannot be um, can be unhealthy too, so please be careful. Okay. Very important exercise. This gentleman who who is uh, seventy one years old that time, I think it was last year. He was on dialysis and uh, diabetic. And you see this tool instrument, a T shape. He started to do a belly button exercise, and three months later, he was cured. So uh, they sell that instrument at ninety nine dollars plus taxes. But you don't want to waste your money. Just grab a remote control okay. and push it around, all around, okay. all around. Okay, from upper abdomen to lower abdomen. Okay, and then. As deep as possible, but uh, you need to stop the moment you start to feel pain. Actually, you're not supposed to feel pain. A little bit discomfort, that's okay. But then you will stimulate uh, those organs on your abdomen. So it will help you too. And you may want to take uh, minerals and vitamins because you have eaten so many different GMO. Mm -hmm. Right, so you are supposed to be uh, feeling a uh, lack of uh, minerals and vitamins, especially the vitamin D. Uh, we didn't talk about a lot. Is vitamin D is the only vitamin our body can create, right? Mm -hmm. It is not due to lack of sunlight, even though uh, it's indirect sunlight. As long as you have sunlight for a couple of hours in your house. Your, your body should be still create vitamin D. Vitamin D is a simple function of your liver and kidney. Okay? The problem of taking vitamin D supplements is our body has its own self-controlling capability. So, of course, because you are uh, experiencing lack of vitamin D, it can help you a little bit. It is to help on the reducing the symptoms related to lack of vitamin D. However, when you keep doing that, then your liver and kidney will have to think, oh, I don't have to work hard enough to create a vitamin D anymore. They, so they're going to shut down their plant. Right? They never tell you that. And who knows exactly 5,000 IU is the exact amount you need? Yeah. Okay. Nobody tells you. you don't, nobody can tell you. Yeah. So it can be overdose or underdose. And you, your health condition can uh, keep fluctuating depending on the food, sleeping, water, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And who knows? They're all blinded people. And this will raise your vitamin D level. So eventually, you will see slowly, slowly cut down okay. supplements. Okay? Um, let's go back to omega 3 because this is very important. So you just, I just click this one, right? Here. So let me just. Uh, This one. I'm going to go very briefly. Uh, as I saw, said earlier, omega 6 to 3 ratio should be from 1 to 5 to 1, right? And flexis ratio has 0 0.26 to 1, and chia seed has 0 0.33 to 1. A hemp seeds is 2.5 to 1. So these seeds you need to eat. And hemp seeds is, uh, I like to recommend 
uh, in the order of hamses, flexes, and chesses. The reason why it is ham is sometimes called a marijuana, sometimes it is called uh, cannabis. Okay. That plant is very, very healthy and strong that they don't have to spray any herbicide. So even though it doesn't say organic, they're all full organic. Okay, let's say you are a farmer and you're growing cannabis or hemp and you know you don't have to spray herbicide. So why would you want to waste your money, right? But when they put them in the back, they love to put organic label on it to jack up the price. Yeah, that's how people want to deceive. So how do you see any difference now? No mess? Like everywhere? Well, not <laughs> not necessarily. If you're lucky, you can see the difference. I don't know, we need to compare better or same or worse. Same? Okay. Like you said the percentage, like I'm less ingredient, right? So sometimes in my food I see like it has total lumps sometimes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's like a little bit of numbness in the food. Yeah, because they're all or indication of but right activities. Now it's not like that the whole food is numb, but it's still the numbness is there. Well, we need to compare when you walk in and now. No, it's the same actually. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. I'm just asking. Okay, let's go back. So, um, now, this is what it is. <clears throat> Many people say eat a lot of nuts, right? Mm -hmm. Not saying which nuts. Well, even they say even almonds and uh, what is it? Peanuts are they good? Mm -hmm. Is it true? No. Let's have a look at it. Peanuts, what's the rate, rate ratio? 55 to 100 to 1. You don't want to even touch it, right? Almonds, almost 2,000 to 1. Would you like to still touch it? No. So the nuts, or English nuts, is the only thing you want to touch because it is 4 to 1. But all other things, pecans, 21 to 1, or all other things, no, you don't want to touch it. Again, those people, like peanut industry, whatever they say is uh, eat a lot of peanuts because it's uh, vegetable oil, vegetable fat, and it's going to help you with that, and that, that, that. Is it true? No. So don't trust anybody in farm raised, uh, farm industry, food in the industry, and medical industry. Okay. So even oils, uh, coconut oil, unfortunately, it doesn't have any omega-3 content in it. But uh, as long as you eat flaxes, chia seeds, and hemp seeds, it will be compensated. And flaxseed oil is still good, right here. So if you want to use it to cook or whatever, that will be good. Canola oil is 2 to 1, which is good, but usually they are GMO. Unless it clearly says uh, organic, you know what you're going to get. Walnut oil is 5 to 1, so even of all our, uh, walnut oil, we can use it, but olive oil is 13 to 1, so simply with this fact alone, you don't want to use it. Right? Okay. Go 
Fuzzies. Fuzzies. Now, I want to go through this YouTube video about vaccination. So I want to to inform, um, make a decision informed. Okay? And I want to have a water filter installed or follow the water filter in home. Okay? Because this lady is talking about the chemtrail from California to UN. Uh, chemtrail chem is like this. This is the control of the ordinary jet airplanes uh, clouds, which is supposed to disappear in 15 minutes. But chemtrail, it takes like this. You can stay up to like 12 hours up in the sky. So what it does is, okay, you see these kind of clouds, they don't disappear. They put chemical tanks in the air, jet airplanes and then they spray all over. Here. And this is to do what? Huh? What are they spraying for? Is it the same antenna or something? That's the same antenna. Like this? Mm. Yep. So please watch it. So this is pretty much what I tell my patients that my patients need to know what they are trying to do or harm, how they are trying to harm you. So you, you know how to protect yourself from bad guys. Okay? And lotions, shampoos, conditioners, and cosmetic products. Once it is absorbed through your skin, then guess what? That's toxic chemical. So if you have any skin issue, then use coconut oil instead. Okay? Even now, uh, athletes, kids, or fungi, you can use coconut oil. Deal with it. Okay? I remember I asked for the little corn kind of thing in the skin. So I had coconut oil in and I mixed a few drops of oregano oil. Mm -hmm. And I put like every day for a week and it was okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. good job. Yeah. And. Don't worry. Uh, mammogram, uh, you may want to search something here. I just want to give you information here. Switzerland completely abolished mammography screens. Here's why you should probably never get one either. So it was. What was the reason? 2014. Because it has to squeeze your breast. Yeah, it presses very hard. Yeah? yeah. And then it can bust if there's any cancer of tumor. It can bust? Why not? And plus the radiation causes more damage than, yeah. mm -hmm. even if you don't have it probably, yeah. you won't be able to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you need to measure pros and cons. Mm -hmm. So, um, those people in conventional medicine, they love to say, the reason why we do cancer tests is to prevent the cancer. No, there's no way by testing it. This testing is to test, not to prevent. Right? The test is to find there is a, if there's any or not. You will, so they still love to deceive people just like them. We can prevent breast cancer. It's funny. Memory. So I think more and more people are getting aware of doing organic.
with stuff and alternative mm-hmm. medicine. Every, I think every now you're in the mail, in your regular mail, you get the flyers for the people to come or the calls, come for annual examination, yeah. visit us for dental examination, do this, do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because they're, they don't need people for business, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Even uh, I went for mammogram like this year. So I don't know what happened. They called me again. We saw something in the. They did from another direction. I don't know. It was nothing. They scared me so much. They called me there and they did mammogram and they said, okay, sit there. We'll call you. We'll let you know today if it's uh, you are okay or not. And suddenly she came and she said, you have to go for uh, ultrasound now. I think it's a making of business because they haven't found anybody for so many days. Scare tactics, yes. I started crying. (laughs) And those five minutes, I like imagined everything, my life after that. And then they told me, you are okay. (laughs) No, the the other problem is... I refuse now, so do you want to ask I'm not going? Seriously. What you still didn't think of is, are they accurate? What they told you, you don't have any problem. Is that true or accurate? Yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah. I think they knew it that I'm fine, but I don't know. Why they didn't install they such expensive they machine. They have yeah. to make use of them and make money. And I have seen many cancer, not many, but a few cancer patients. Uh, uh, they went to MRI and X-ray, so many ultrasound. Yeah, and so and they were still making mistakes. Yeah, I have been to everything. MRI, brain MRI, money, neck, money, money. pelvis, every X-rays, even <laughs> everything I've done. Because they get kickback from the lab. When you uh, when and the doctor rather than order that order, they get kicked up from my lab. I'm telling her only two things: stop going everywhere, yeah. <laughs> no. feel as if you're fine, you're all good, and if you're you're coming here, you will feel good because half the thing starts here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You think too much and you create <laughs> those things in your head first, and then in. Okay. I think oh, I went through pretty much everything, but just to make sure. But uh, I'm, not, I'm not missing anything. Okay, I think that's it.